Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to Season 2 of the Cooler League. <laughs> So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to be adding in today's video. Today we're going to be adding the Thermal Right Frozen Edge 360. As always with these videos, we'll do a quick montage of the install, then I'll give you my thoughts on the install, how it went, etc, etc. Then after that we will go through all of the scores. Once we've gone through all the scores and the league tables, I will give you my final conclusion on the cooler. Alright, so without further ado, let's get on to the install montage. It's a typical AIO, to be perfectly honest. You've got the complexity of installing the radiator and, and fans onto the case, which obviously makes it install a little bit more difficult. The actual install of the block was fairly comparable to a lot of other air coolers. But you've got to say it's a lot more complex because you've got a lot more moving parts. You've got to make sure that the the, you know, the, the pipes are fairly good, in good position and not twisted or anything else like that. You've got to make sure the orientation of the block's fine, etc, etc, etc. So, it was a little bit more difficult than, say, an air cooler was. But otherwise, say, compared to what the AOs have installed already, I would say it was relatively simple. You've still got the same old problem that you have with with the Thermalrite previous AO as well, that you've got separate cables for the um, for the RGB and for the he fan header. They have included a splitter which you can connect them all up to it, which does help, and also the, P uh, the uh, RGB cables do daisy chain. Um, but if you look at, say, the likes of the new um, Corsair ones now, excuse me, they are now including the ability to daisy chain. You only have one cable coming off for both RGB and for the fans, which makes life a lot easier. Although you do have a block involved with that, which there isn't in this. But even then, I think the, 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 the install wasn't too bad. All right, so with all of that in mind, now let's get on to the scores and see how the cooler did in the league table. Base temp. 
the, the frozen edge was a 20 Celsius at idle. Not the worst, not the best, and really the cooler wasn't working too hard, and as you'll see now with bass sound, the cooler was at 34.1, which is the lowest decibels we've got of all of the coolers. All I could really hear at idle was not, not the fans, the fans were whisper quiet. There was no real um, pump whine either. The only thing I could really hear was a little bit of bubbling from the liquid in the cooler itself. And really once it was actually going for a short amount of time, you couldn't really hear anything. It was whisper quiet. Cinebench score. The Cinebench score itself was only 27,324, which is pretty much in the middle of the pack, which is what a very kind of consistent level that we're seeing from all of the coolers these days. And it's making me wonder about the uh, Phantom Spirit of whether I need to retest that score because it seems exceedingly high compared to some of the others. So it did very well. And you'll see why I've got doubts about this score being in the middle of the pack when you can look at the max temp. The max temp for a Core i9 12900K under full stress load was 68 degrees Celsius, which is just absolutely stunning. That has basically spanked every other cooler that I've tested so far. So from a, just a pure cooling perspective, this cooler has just basically left everything else behind. Even left the likes of the Cooler Master MA8-4 Stealth, which is also an excellent cooler. It beat that by four degrees Celsius. So a great result. The only thing I would say about it is the max sound the three fans did get going and we saw a decibel of 46.3 which is a lot more noisy than the Cooler Master M8804 Stealth. So if you look at those two coolers and balance off where you've got four degrees di difference but you've also got two decibels difference they're roughly about the same for me in terms of cooling performance. The only real difference is, <laughs> is that this cooler is $57.90 that's what you can pick it up for whereas the Stealth cooler is $100. So that gives you an idea of basically the level of cooling that you're getting for the price. But we'll go to that in more details in a second. The scoring range. They are as they are, no changes there. From the league table point of view, the Frozen Edge comes in at a very, very, very respectable second place. It has a score of 28, which is only one point behind the Phantom Spirit which is an excellent performance, especially when you can, can keep in mind that the ease of install is down a little bit because it's an AIO, so it's difficult to give it a very, very, very high score for that. And in terms of cooler analysis, well, now, if we look at this, it's obviously got free fans. And as I mentioned earlier, the price is 57.90. And the score excluding price is 24, which is actually the highest of all all of the coolers. So if you just look at that and based on pure performance alone and not value, it's the top cooler. And what that means is for a, for a price per point, you're paying $2.41, which is excellent. So that means the only cooler that beats it, the, be, the only coolers that beat it is the Phantom Spirit in terms of value and the PLS Assassin, which are other two, two other thermal right coolers, which are also very cheap. Then we get to the actual performance from a cooling perspective. And you can, as we can see, as Oren mentioned earlier, it got to 68 Celsius. So a price per degree below 100, it's a dollar and 81, which is great value considering it's an AIO. If we look at, say, the cooler that we were comparing it to quite extensively in terms of the performance was the Cooler Master M8824 Stealth. That finished with a cost per temperature of $3.57. So realistically, this cooler performs amazingly well, and especially for the price. $1.81 for a per degree below 100 is just amazing. All right, so that's the, that's the league table and the further analysis done. Now let's go on to my final conclusion. So the cooler finished second. What a great result. And if you can, and the price of this AIO, which is sub $70 for a 360 AIO that performs in this manner, keeping the, I, 
Core i9 12900K under 70, 70 degrees under stress is amazing. So I, I have to say, if the score had been slightly higher, which I think is something to do with the boost clocks and everything else, but if the score was higher, it would have finished first. So for me, do I recommend this cooler? Absolutely. It is a big step forward. You can see from the frozen note to this cooler that Thermal Right have made big steps in the way they've assembled their coolers. The performance was excellent. So 100% I recommend this cooler. All right, I hope you found this information useful. Uh, please toss a like on the video if you liked it. Also, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions on the cooler, any questions on the testing setup or anything else, or even questions on any of the coolers that I've tested previously, leave them in the, leave them in the comments spot down below. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon. Uh, my cadence of videos is not that great. You know, I try and get a video out every month, but you know, we're working full time and other jobs and things like that, it's more difficult. But I do try my best to do that. So if you hit the bell icon, you will be notified when I have that once a month video coming up. All right, that's all the YouTube stuff done. Again, I hope you found this video useful. And as always, take care.